Hi, I'm Jenny. Welcome back to the Hot Violinist YouTube channel where it's never too late. So you're here to learn the North Jetty. If you wanna hear me play this entire tune, there's a link right there in the description. I'm gonna be playing this bar by bar for you today and sharing all of my tips and tricks. Let's go. Before we jump in, let's get clear about our left hand finger positions and which notes we'll be using on which strings. This tune is in the key of A minor. If you've ever played The Last of the Mohicans theme, just know it's in the same key. My first fiddle teacher, Jim Fox, said the way that you know a tune was written on fiddle for fiddle is if it uses all four strings and this tune is no exception. So let's go string by string with the violin here in guitar position, just to give you a heads up on your left hand positions for the tune. On the G string, we're gonna have the open string, first finger, second finger, and third finger. First and second are both in normal position, which means the second finger is close to the third finger. Then coming over to the D string, we're gonna have open, first finger, and then a low two, and then a three. So now our second finger is hugging close to the first. On the A string, we're gonna have that same finger position, but the first finger note is never played in this tune. So we just have open, low two, and three. And then on E string, same exact thing as this, open, low two, and three. Fun fact about the key. We only use the A and the E strings in the A part of this tune. And when you omit those two notes of the first finger on both of those strings, it turns it from a regular seven note A minor scale into just a five note scale, which is the A minor pentatonic. Anyway, you don't have to worry about scales or pentatonic or any of that, as long as you remember normal finger positions on the G string. Low two on the D. And then low two, but skipping the one on the A and the E. Oh yeah, we have the fourth finger on the E string too. Don't forget that. Lots of slides in this tune. It also has some double stops. I'll show you how to add those into the C part. Loads of pretty slurs, which means multiple notes on one bow stroke. I'll show you what part of the bow to use for all of those. And last but not least, five note rolls. I'll go over what fingerings I use for all the five note rolls, but if you want all my detailed secrets on how to train up clean, crisp five note rolls, you wanna click on my Last of the Mohicans freebies in the description, because these are all the same five note rolls that appear in the Last of the Mohicans. Coincidence? Let's go bar by bar and I'll give you a nice slow run through of every nook and cranny of this piece. All right, so we'll start from the very beginning. In bar one, this first note that you know to play a five note roll because it has that little boop thing over it, it's gonna be played with a one, three, one, oh, one. And you wanna start about at this first quarter of the bow. We'll call this the middle, first quarter, third quarter, tip. Pretty close to the frog because we need a good long bow stroke here. You can add a slide if you want. And then we have our open one. And then going into bar two, this next five note roll is three, four, three, two, three. And then three G open D leaving us in that same spot. For 
for the 13101 on the D string. And then we're gonna play a three one on D. And I didn't write this in the sheet, but now I wanna add another slide. The more slides, the merrier in this tune. Sweet, that's gonna take us on into the A part where we're uh, all set to play a down bow here on the open A. And then we're gonna walk up that little uh, scale pattern that we learned. It does happen to be the pentatonic. We're gonna go open A, low to A, three A. And then I like to use my fourth finger here so that I can slide down into that open A. And then going into the second bar of the A part, we're gonna slide into our three E. Why not slide into the fourth finger too? Okay, now this is taking us into bars three and four of the A part. That's easier for my brain than counting bars from the beginning. What do you think? Is this okay with you? The, the A part has eight bars, so does the B part and the C part. So within each of those, I'll just talk about bars one through eight in that part. So yeah, once again, we're in A part, bars three and four of the A. We have a nice long low two E here. And then a slide into the three, two. And then open E. I'm probably slightly exaggerating how much bow since I've kind of slowed this down, but it this bow this tune uses a bigger section of the bow than most fiddle tunes because of that sort of odd rhythm and the longer notes that it has in, in here and there. And now we get to play a more fiddly type of run. We've got a slur, so we're gonna stay on an up bow for our two, three. And then all separate bows as we do this run down of four notes. I hope you have your sheet with the tab markings so you can follow along and so that way I won't say every single fingering. You can grab your free copies in the bio if you haven't already. All right, now going into bars four through eight of the A part, I just wanted to talk about something real quick. There are some funky syncopated rhythms in here. I about lost my mind trying to figure out how to write these rhythms and figure out where the dots needed to be. I was looking at it thinking, what have we been playing all these years? Just remember, this is a folk tune. It's supposed to go by feel. Use the sheet as a loose guide to find the notes and then follow your ear, follow your heart. The only other option is to sit here counting one E and a two E and a three E at foot tapping all spastic like mine was while I was sitting here trying to write this, 100% do not recommend. So yeah, please don't feel pressure to play these exactly as written. If it's good enough for rock and roll, it's good enough for me. So yeah, we have a little run here in the fifth bar of the A part that's all on the A string. Oh no, let's play the open E in here. Let's go um, open A, two, three, A, open E and back down. Yep, and going into the sixth bar, we've got this little part at the first half. And then in the second half of this bar, it gets kind of crazy there with the grace notes, but here's all that's happening. It's an up bow that goes two, three, two, one. Almost on the home stretch, on the home stretch here with the A part, bar seven and eight. Let's give a nice juicy slide into the third finger on the D string. And hey, let me talk about this for a second. When I say juicy, I mean, I'm starting with my finger at least a half step flat 
and then coming up and finding the note. So I'm fully pressing it down, pulling my, pulling my fingers back and then coming up to it. I think about a half step is enough. And then here's one, another one of these, these runs where we're gonna start with an up bow slur. So both of these first notes are on the up bow. And then we've got the four notes all on separate bows. I couldn't resist going into that first finger G that starts the eighth bar. And then to finish out this eighth bar, I think of these as pickup notes into the B part. And we're close to the tip here, which is great because we have a big old slur. We've got to get five notes in. So starting on the open D, use your fourth finger here. This is way more bow than you're actually going to use when this is up to speed. You're more, you'll probably land more like here, right about the middle of the bow. And then we have our, and then back down. And then go to the open A for this time through these eight notes. And then another slur of these notes on the D string, starting with the third finger. All right, so that got us through the first two bars of the B part. Going into the third bar here, we're gonna be on our third finger on the G string. And I think of these as sort of shorter, jaunty bow strokes. And those shorts, bow strokes set us up for these nice long slurs that we're going to do here. It creates a contrast. We do this pack of four and this pack of four. And then the fourth bar here just kind of gives us this little answer. which is gonna launch us back into those same pickup notes and then the same bar, bar five is just like bar one. But then bar six is kind of its own whole new thing. It, go, it has a three note thing on open A. Then two, three on A. Some crazy looking grace notes but this is really just a two three two and then open two all right home stretch of the b part bar seven and eight starting with our rich slide into the third finger d Here's a little bit of a different setup on the bowing of this part. Every two notes is on its own slur. So we've got three, four, three, two, one, two, and then our ah, uh, open D. Now we're still, we still have a few more notes to play in the B part. But once again, I think of these as the pickup note into the C into the C part. This is where the C part vibes sort of begin. And speaking of which, C part is where we have all the double stops. And the double stops can actually begin at the beginning of bar eight. So that open D that we just played has the option for you to add a first finger on the G string and kind of mix that in. So let's play that open D again. Let me show you, show you what I'm talking about. So I'm getting my first finger on that G string and then just slowly lifting my elbow so it kind of mixes in whenever it wants to. So 
Here's what that sound that that sounds like from a little bit backed up. So it's somewhere like that. The bow does stay on the string, but you can kind of increase the speed there at the end just before you get it off onto the D string. And that'll give it that kind of swell effect. All right, so now those pickups at the end of bar A to the B, headed into the C. And right here, you can add an optional open G. I just didn't have the heart to write in all these double stops and make this thing look even more kind of like cluttered and sheet music-y and classical than it, or, than it already was starting to. Didn't want to make it too hard to read. So that's what this tutorial is for, to let you know where these optional open strings are that you can add in. So here's what it sounds like if you uh, play this first bar of the C with an open G string. Yeah, and you can keep that G string ringing through these notes as well. We have those two notes for both slurs going again. And then right here, going into the second bar of the C, this is where I would drop those double stops out and just play the notes. And then it's kind of similar here. We have some notes on the open D that, that kind of like launch us in and we can play the G during those as well. And then let's leave the double stops out for the, which brings us into bar four of the C part and another opportunity to add in double stops with the open G. And this sounds familiar, doesn't it? You can leave the, that G ringing here if you want. And then let's drop it out. So on this one, it just adds kind of a slow five note roll in on that low note that you add on. We're halfway through the sixth bar of the C part. That's how that goes down. That open double stop string is optional on those notes. Let me see what I do. double stops and put the double stops back in for those um, at the beginning of bar seven of the C part. And then right here is where they drop out. This is one of the trickiest parts right here. I, I, this, this part like got a little bug in my hand and I was messing it up in, in a bunch of performances one time because you're here, you've been playing the double stops. You've got your third finger on the D string and then it boop, needs to hop right over to just the G with the third finger on the G. So the finger has to make a quick quick jump there. So this could be a good bar to do some looping or to do just kind of practicing this transition because it goes over to that third G and then right away it's a slur back up to the open D. Go ahead and tune. And then all separate bows. And then right here I put the down bow marking in there because we finish on a down bow but then we're going to play and we're going to pick up the bow on every one of those. So from that one. Drums. Back into the beginning of the A part. So I put some notes here about the arrangement. We'll only play that intro with the five note rolls once. So here when you get to the end, you go back to the beginning, go to the beginning of the A part, play A, B, C again, and then you can play the A part one last time to just take you to the out of the tune. 
we would play it with that part slowed down to a half time. That was one of the little things that we stole from the Hank the Third that we were listening to at the time. That's not necessary. If you're playing it by yourself, solo violin, you might wanna just keep it going at speed for that at the beginning and then kind of feel it out and see where it feels right to you to start the slowing down into the end. Main tip here is to milk all the slides and add a few extra grace notes just wherever you can. So here's one example. I'll back it up here from the end of the C part. the bow there just try to make it so that you can end on a down bow thanks for playing violin with me today nobody is going to play a tune like you do for your people so go get them and fiddle on <laughs>